All right, for today's video review, we're going to be taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Commander Class Rodimus Prime. This is, uh, this is a figure that I've been really excited for for quite a while now. It was probably my uh, most anticipated figure from uh, Kingdom Wave 3 and is uh, one of the last ones that I was able to get my hands on. And uh, yeah, this is our, our Commander Class for Kingdom, and he is... Quite a spectacular figure, let me tell you. Uh, here he is in his big uh, space Winnebago mode. Obviously, he comes with a, a lot of accessories here, which I'll get into individually. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to move these off to the side just so you can see what his, uh, what his vehicle mode looks like. And yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good rendition of his vehicle mode. Um, there's been some people that have been complaining that like, you know, the, that the, uh, he, his car mode kind of extends a little bit too far out from the front. Uh, and yeah, I can see the complaint there. I feel like, you know, the, uh, space Winnebago mode that he had in the movie, it really should be like kind of around this point that, that it's under the, uh, under the trailer. So, like, yeah, it sticks out a little bit, but it was always kind of like a goofy abstract vehicle mode to begin with, or like an alien, not as much abstract, but so it, it doesn't bug me too much. It's a little weird that, you know, you can you can see, like, all eight wheels there, whereas, like, usually it compresses enough that these wheels would be kind of hiding underneath these ones, so you'd only really see six of them, but again... That's not too big a deal. I think in terms of like the detail and stuff like that, I love the flame pattern. Overall, I think the look is there. And, uh, you know, he still does sort of have the thing where he's got a bit more of like a squished hood compared to uh, compared to Hot Rod, whereas like Hot Rod had like the full flame and um, Rodimus had just like this part of the flame sticking out. And they've found a way to do that where he still has the full flame in uh, his chest in robot mode, but not have it be like a cheated part, which I really appreciate. Like the rest of the flame, you can kind of see it in there underneath the blue plastic is just like there with his, uh, his kind of iconic collarbone piece too. So that's like, you know, my big complaint about, uh, you know, Studio Series 86 Hot Rod. And the reason that I didn't pick him up is because it, it cheats to get the flame on his chest in robot mode or the whole hood of the car on his chest in robot mode. And I was really, really happy that uh, that this guy did not do that. Um, but yeah, no, that's uh, that's pretty much like, you know, we can get into all the functionality of the trailer and stuff like that. But like, you know, in this mode, like without without uh, detaching it, I guess the one thing to show is the uh, the back here. You can open up the sections on little pistons. I find that when you bring this door back down, it has a tendency to kind of like, you know, not compress all the way until you take these little black pieces that are like the the bits that the the piston is actually sliding on and if you want to get that to sit flush you just have to take these with your fingernails and just push them push them down a little bit and that gets it a lot more flush so you know that's the way to do that but you can open up this door here and then uh open up this section right here and you have that little uh you know you can enter other vehicles and stuff in there and he's got the little uh you know, the com combination port here to attach to other bases and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see he's got a good interior there. I can kind of uh, show that off with some comparisons. Like, you know, we can just get into some of that now here. Uh, here's a few cars that can fit in there rather well. Here's Cup, Studio Series Cup. He fits in there pretty well. You can close it all up. This is obviously if you don't have, uh, you know, any of the other stuff in the trailer. And uh, yeah, that closes up just fine. You know, there's other figures. Um, Studio Series Blur, I find, is a little bit too long, unless you're, like, angling them up a little bit to kind of, like, you know, there's, like, an angled section in there, which I can show off later, but if, if he's not sitting totally flat on the ground and you just push him a little bit further, then you can close all the door the door up and everything like that, but if you have him just sitting flat, uh, then this door doesn't close quite as much, which kind of prevents this from closing, but you can kind of push him further in there and then it works just fine. Um, other obviously figures like, uh, Titans Return Wheelie fits in there, obviously just fine. Um, Thrilling 30 RC fits in there just fine. So yeah, pretty much all the figures you'd want them to want to fit in there, uh, pretty much do. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, pretty much all you're getting out of the trailer mode or out of the trailer when it's in its full combined mode. Obviously it has like a ton of ports here to plug in weapons and stuff like that. Um, then you have this little flap here, which like, I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be for. I think it's for like storing some of the blast effects, but like, 
there's hardly anything else that you can really put in there, so it's a little strange, but, you know, it's it's fine. It's not like it messes with the, uh, the mode or anything like that. Uh, to disconnect it, um, the easiest way I found to do it is to just, like, pull down on the car mode a little bit and then slide it out because it has this little... Uh, this little latch in here that's kind of spring-loaded. You can see that. And um, when you're attaching it, you have to kind of like give it a, a good amount of like force to actually get it to go in there. Like it kind of stops right there and then you need to push it a little farther for it to actually like click, click in. Um, and then thankfully to, to disconnect it, it's a lot easier if you just like pull down on that and then it slides right out. And uh, yeah, there you have him in his... Uh, in his regular vehicle mode here. And it's a, you know, it's a pretty good hot rod kind of car mode. I mean, obviously like this is not meant to be hot rod. This is meant to be like just the singular car form of Rodimus Prime. Um, so it's like a bit chunkier than what we're kind of used to for hot rod, but that's that's fine. It's definitely like the main figure itself is very much like a, uh, you know, a Voyager that has like a really, really insane amount of like engineering put into it. But like size wise, it's pretty much a Voyager figure. And then the trailer and all the extra accessories are what gets it up to being commander class. But um, yeah, I mean, if this was meant to be hot rod, then hot rod really should be kind of deluxe size. And, uh, you know, a car that kind of reflects that because like if you're putting him next to other figures like cup or whatever like he does kind of dwarf him so if you're thinking of this as hot rod that really doesn't work as scale um in terms of like this just being like a rodimus prime singular car mode without the trailer and if you're imagining it being like a bit more of like an armored kind of vehicle like a beefed out version of the hot rod car then like you know we had, we don't have much precedent for that in media because like in the cartoon, he pretty much just turned into the thing with, like, the full Winnebago mode. Like, he didn't really have a separate robot mode. Um, this is more like the toy that had, like, the separate kind of battle platform. And I think that's the better way to do it because it, it allows you to have that, like, size in vehicle mode, with, like, with the trailer and everything, but then still have him be, like, scaled well with other figures in robot mode. But, uh, yeah, here now, let's do some official comparisons here i'll first connect him back to the uh the trailer so we can bring a few on for that um so there he is it's gonna be hard to get a lot of figures on here with, with him at once here he is with uh with leader class optimus prime with his trailer so you can see you know they're they're comparable size like hot rod is definitely bigger um but you know it, it works with pretty well together um let's bring on uh, Kingdom Ultra Magnus, so you can see what they look like together. Again, comparable size. Obviously, he's a commander class and he's a he's a leader class, so he should be a bit bigger, and he is. But you know, he's really kind of built out into the commander class by having like lots of features and accessories and stuff like that, more so than like the gigantic size that like Skylinks or Jetfire had. But yep, that's them. Um, here he is with uh, with Siege Springer. Let's bring back on, we can get a few of them on here. Here he is with Cup and Blur, uh, both from Studio Series 86, and then also Thrilling 30 RC. So you can see what they look like together. Here he is with, uh, with Wheelie from Titan's Return. Here he is with, obviously, uh, you know, looks a little ridiculous, but Studio Series 86 uh, Rekgar, which, you know, we don't really ever, you know, we don't see him scaled with Rekgar that often in this mode. Um, but, you know, I, I think that that seems mostly accurate to what it probably was in the movie. It's just kind of a weird scaling with Rekgar because, like, obviously he's a motorcycle, so looks absurdly out of scale. But in, in canon, he does turn into an absurdly huge motorcycle, so it, it works. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, you know, pretty much all the vehicle mode comparisons I wanted to get across, at least with this. And we can bring a few of them back on to uh, here he is with uh, Optimus Prime in his singular mode. So you can see, like, that doesn't really, like, if you're imagining him being, like, a normal size car, like, he's way too big to be next to Optimus. But if you're imagining him as being more of, like, a, you know, armored vehicle or something like that, like, whatever. It's a space vehicle. It can scale however you need it to. Um Here's Blur, Cup, RC, Wheelie, uh, Rekgar again. Oop. Let's 
bring on Springer, who I feel like, you know, these two, you know, like Springer, you're imagining being like more of an armored vehicle. So like that, you know, I feel like that works fairly well. If you're not imagining him being like a sports car anymore, because now he's Rodimus and not Hot Rod. And then here he is with uh, with Ultra Magnus again. So yeah, you know, it, I think it, it works fairly well. Again, like, you know, obviously, if you're wanting this to be a hot rod and then this to be a Rodimus Prime when combined, like, I don't think this works particularly well as a hot rod car just because it's just much too large. But um, if you're imagining it as being like, oh, he's still Rodimus Prime, he just doesn't have his trailer with him, and he transforms, obviously, into a bigger car because he now transforms into a, a bigger robot, he's a, you know, a bigger, beefier car. Um, but yeah, let's get on to some of the accessories and features. Let me just bring on the trailer here for a sec. Uh, because I, I feel like this is probably a good time to show the, the, the trailer uh, transformed into its, you know, battle platform mode. Uh, it's pretty simple. Like, pretty much all you do is uh, you fold out the sides here. Now, these smokestack pieces are on, like, a springy bit. On this side, I feel like it works fairly well where I open it up and that automatically springs down. On this side, sometimes that happens where the, uh, the thing comes, on, uh, like, goes up underneath, which it's really not supposed to. So, like, it's kind of hard to get it back over there otherwise. So like you kind of have to kind of hold it up and then do that manually. Um, this section here can flip over like that for whatever reason, just to differentiate it a little bit. And uh, this section here, what they want you to do is open up the, uh, the door here and then take this whole section and fold it down and then take this panel and fold it back on top. And uh, you know, it looks okay. The thing I really don't like about that look in particular is that like it makes this panel kind of like awkwardly stick up at an angle like it's not flat like the rest of it. So personally, I think what I like to do is, you know, fold this back up. Um, oh God, that that it really locks very, very tightly into there and that can be kind of annoying to uh, clasp that sometimes uh, and then bring this back down and then bring this back down over it. So it sits like that. I don't know. I think that just looks a little bit better. Uh, obviously, you know, you can't really connect it to other bases like that unless you're like having it go underneath this panel, which would kind of raise that piece up a little bit awkwardly. Um, but, you know, I, I still think it looks better overall like that. Um, so let's let's talk trailer. <laughs> the other thing, here, check out the inside here. <laughs> All of the weapon ports, like we're like a crazy amount of weapon ports to plug different stuff into. I appreciate it, but you know, with some of the features, like it, it's, I'm not sure what to plug in there, um, but you could definitely take like a bunch of different weapons that you got from like the War for Cybertron uh, trilogy and just kind of like really weaponize this thing out and let, make it look crazy. So I appreciate it, but it, it is just kind of a funny sight to see like how many weapon ports there are. Um, so uh, let's talk this this guy uh, because it causes some problems with the trailer. Um, this is like the little like weapons gun platform. This is in its compressed mode here like this. And then to transform it, uh, you kind of, you know, bring this gun up, click it up on that joint. You can open up these things as kind of like blast shields. And then this little piece that was kind of just the, the leg for it to stand on and it's uh, compressed mode. You can fold to the bottom there. It's got little handles here that, you know, I'll, I'll show this off again in robot mode and how it interacts with him in, in robot mode. But like, that's that's basically how it, how it works. Um, and then for storage for this thing, it does fit inside the trailer. Um, and to help it like stay in there securely, it's got a little peg that you fold out from underneath here. And you're meant to plug it into uh, to this port right here. And, uh, you know, it, it fits pretty well. It's even got like a little tab right here. So when you flip this piece over, that's what this little uh, cutout is. And it sits over it like that. Um, and it, it does work, but uh, when you're actually like closing it all up, it can be kind of tricky to get this to actually stay closed. Like that that's better than it usually works. When the thing is in there, it always kind of like pops up like that a little bit. Like there's definitely a strategy to it where like, you know, these these uh, little clips here go into these sections right here. And I feel like if you start with that and, you know, like really make sure those lock in first, then it makes the rest of this a little bit easier to kind of like lock in together. But then it still sort of has a problem where it's pushing it apart ever so slightly and it can be kind of annoying. It's just like it's honestly like 
it sort of depends on the day. It probably depends on the heat in the room a little bit too, like how much, you know, the these pieces are really like grabbing onto those tabs and it can be kind of annoying. Um, but, you know, that being said, it, it does fit in there just fine. Obviously this, you know, makes it impossible to put any other vehicles or anything in there, but uh, you know, it's, it's nice that that does store in there. And then, you know, you can have the full, uh, the full effect of the weapon mode if you, um, if you then, uh, use this piece and, like, unfold it and, like, this is really, like, the, uh, the platform mode that he's supposed to stand on, which is, you know, I barely have enough space to show it off here, but, uh, you know, you can you can kind of see how that works. And again, we'll we'll show that off again in robot mode. But it's just worth mentioning that like this being in there, it's much easier to close and have everything like sit flush and actually locked together when that's not in there, which which is kind of a bummer. Um, it still sometimes has some problems where it's not like fully closing. Like it, if you don't have this in there, it's not like it stays together perfectly. It just makes it a little bit easier to do it. Um, so yeah, I don't know, a little strange. Uh, talking about storage, uh, like if you have this in there and we bring on the, uh, the other two weapons that he comes with, his gun and his sword, um, they do have places to store on the individual car mode. The sword has uh, two little slots right here that go into two little tabs on his leg and it just stores nice, clean under the car. I really appreciate that because like a lot of weapon storage recently, like you know, in the past few years, it's just been like, tab it onto the car, there's your storage. And it's like, that's not, it. it's not storage. It kind of like messes with the look of it. So I really appreciate that the sword can like hide away completely unobtrusively in the, uh, in the car mode. The gun, however, uh, it's a few weird things going on with it. First of all, so like to store it in this mode, um, you have, it's got this hinge right in the middle and you can fold it in half just like that. And then uh, it, it plugs on here like that, and that's supposed to be your storage in the uh, in the car mode, which is like, that's kind of the thing that I'm complaining about, where it's like, that's not really storage, because it kind of ruins the look of this thing. I don't know. But then what's even crazier about it is like, okay, that's my issue, right, where I don't like just pegging it onto the car as weapon storage. But then, like, if you want to attach the trailer, you can't actually do that, because this piece now gets in the way, and if you have this piece in there there's really no place for this to go like officially like you can kind of kind of get it so that like if this is uh if this piece is is plugged in there um you can kind of like get this to just kind of like rest underneath it uh and it kind of just like rattles around in there like it, it, it doesn't fit perfectly and you kind of have to like finagle it a little bit but you you I have gotten it in there so it does physically store somewhere but it's not like actually pegged in anywhere because if you use any of the uh the ports on the side here it'll run into either this piece or the uh the gun there so like you kind of can't like really store both of them in there at once uh, if you don't have this piece in there, obviously, then you can just like peg it into one of these uh, these ports here and it, it fits just fine. But it, it's, it's just kind of strange that like, and I'll get into this in a sec too, like how so many things have like dedicated storage areas on this toy for vehicle mode and the gun just kind of doesn't. Like, I guess like it doesn't really say anything about it in the instructions, but if you wanted to, because of the way that this works, like one of the pegs is a little bit longer than the other one. So if you want to use one of these ports on top here, you can do that and just like, you know, it have it still be flush. Like you could peg it in like that and like that doesn't look terrible. Again, like I don't really like that as storage because it, you know, it's just kind of sitting on top of the car rather than stored anywhere. But that that is an option that you could do. But it, it it's just kind of weird, especially considering like, one of the other features of this trailer is that it has this uh, this slide out tray underneath that you can uh, take out and there's like some stuff in here and what these pieces are for are dedicated storage for some of the blast effects, which is kind of wild because like blast effects, I don't think are anything that like really needs storage just because like you know, they're, they're more for like photography and like specific poses and stuff like that. They're not like the weapons where I would like, you know, 
like to consider that they actually store on the, you know, the like canonical version of these characters. I would like to I would like the consideration that the weapons have to go somewhere where they're in vehicle mode, whereas the blast effects are just like, you know, sort of non-diegetic, like additional pieces for like, you know, action poses and stuff like that. So it's kind of funny that they gave uh, these pieces in particular, like dedicated storage underneath the vehicle mode, especially considering they don't give dedicated storage to the rest of the blast effects. So again, just kind of some weird like choices there. Um, getting into the blast effects, I'll, I'll go over what they what they all are and what they're all for. Uh, the first one, hold on, let me just get that back in there. First one here is uh, is really meant for more robot mode, like. Um, it's a it's a piece that'll attach to the matrix. So I'll show that off later, but that that's what this is. Um, and then he's got these two little flame pieces, which I'm not sure why these are done in black because they're first of all not black plastic. They're they're definitely like the clear blue plastic that that this piece is. And like this piece is a different plastic than than these pieces are. Like this is like the traditional blast effect pieces that are just like that more uh, soft rubber thing going on. Whereas this one is definitely a bit more firm. Uh, I, I imagine that they did that. So it's like, it doesn't feel like brittle or anything, but it does feel a little bit stiffer so that they could have like these long pieces out here that wouldn't like get droopy and weird or something like that. And these are done in that plastic and then painted black. And I'm not sure why, because I feel like they just would have looked better in the blue without the painted. Because what these are for is like, you know, if you have the, uh, the vehicle mode, all together, you use these to combine to uh, to attach to the uh, the smokestacks here to have him kind of like you know shooting out flames, and then you can use like pieces like this in the in the back here on the little pieces on that tray and kind of have him you know in the in a uh, going forward fast mode with the flames and stuff like that. And I I feel like that probably would have looked better as being blue like the other pieces, but eh, it's not that big a deal. I think that these uh, these pieces are cast in the same plastic that the windshield is, which I'll talk about a little bit later during transformation because it's not like the typical kind of clear plastic that we see on like a lot of other figures, like, you know, this kind of plastic, which sometimes can be a little bit brittle. Like this definitely feels like it's got a bit more like flex and strength to it at the same time. But uh, yeah, so that's that's my little weird thing about the uh, the storage of like the blast effects and everything like that. But uh, yeah, I think that's a pretty good time to get into transformation. So obviously, you know, we kind of went over how the uh, how the trailer works, whereas the the main figure himself here is a uh, pretty much just a Voyager sized transformer. Although he is he does have quite a bit of involvement in his transformation. Um, first thing, we'll just take off the uh, the sword here. If you have it underneath. Uh, you want to take this section here with the spoiler. Actually, wait. First, you want to take these little panels. Um, they're just tabbed into the uh, the black pieces here. And you just fold those over like that. Then you can take this whole piece and untab it and just lift it up for now. Uh, we can rotate it around, but for now, we'll just leave it up like that. Um, next thing here is we want to untab the windshield from the uh, the chest here just to loosen things up a little bit. And then we can untab the uh, the chest from these sections here, which will be the arms. Um, and then we can take those sections, which are, you know, they're kind of like locked in in a few different places here, but you kind of just pull them out to the side like that. Uh, you want to take these little pieces left on the hood and just fold those onto the inside. These have a tendency to, to, to pop off like that. Um, you know, if you're just being kind of careful with them, it, 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 you can pretty much avoid it. They're a little bit loose, but they end up secured in both modes, so it doesn't really totally matter. Um, and then you bring down this whole section. You want to bring this section down with the uh, the windshield. It kind of it's on a double hinge in there, which can be kind of tricky to operate because one of the hinges is like super tight. But you want to get it so that the uh, the it can help actually if you do this first. If you rotate around the waist, then you can bring this down so that that uh, this little gray piece is flat. Because then you take this whole section. And you need that that to be flat for the clearance for this to rotate around like that. And then uh, these sections here, these black sections, you'll want to fold up like that. No, oh, sorry, that's totally wrong. Uh, <laughs> you want to fold them down the opposite way and then uh, take these 
uh, gray sections and they'll tab into the black pieces, which can be kind of tricky to do sometimes, but if you just get the right kind of force applied, just like that, and that's pretty much how you want that. Um, so we'll do that again. Uh, next, we want to take the chest section here. We can rotate around the head. This little uh, this little piece that the windshield was plugged into is actually on a hinge, so you just want to compress it a little bit so it's tabbed into that red piece there. Um, then this uh, gray armature, there's a little divot in there that goes over this little notch on the black piece, so you want to rotate it down so that that clicks into place. You'll hear it when it when it happens, but it can be kind of kind of tricky sometimes. Come on, so uh, what's the issue? <laughs> there we go. Got that locked in place. Um, and then you can kind of compress this piece up like that. Then the windshield has this little section on it like that, and then it'll just clasp onto that uh, that little clip there. And again, this is kind of what I'm talking about. I'm happy that this is kind of this like tougher, like slightly more malleable plastic. Like you, you can't really bend it around, but like if you have this thing in hand, you can kind of feel like it doesn't have the same kind of like brittleness that like a lot of uh, clear plastic has. Like it definitely feels like it's kind of a, a tougher material because like otherwise some of the pressure that you have to put on this thing to like lock it in place and then like using this tab to plug in there, like it would just be kind of a disaster if that was like the sort of typical clear plastic. So I'm thankful that they did it in this other material, which again, I'm pretty sure is the same material that these pieces are uh, are cast in. But uh, yeah, next thing you wanna do is, uh, do we wanna do that now? Yeah, I think so. Take this section and this little piece right here just goes into this little saw right there. And you have to, again, give it a good amount of, good amount of force to actually get that locked in there. And you have to kind of like maneuver the uh, the double hinges in a way too. And then here you go, get it locked in like that. Then uh, we'll do the legs, which is the one scary part of the transformation I'll, I'll get to. First, you want to separate the legs. Um, this piece here, you want to take the section that the wheel is on and just pull it out a little bit because it tabs into this black piece, which you then can rotate out like that. Uh, the knees, you unfold like that. They're on that kind of like double hinge armature section. And then the uh, the wheel on this piece compresses in. What's kind of nice is like to prevent it from just like pre compressing in in car mode. This that like this tab right here when it's locked in is actually locked into the piece that slides with this. So you can't actually compress the wheel when it's actually in uh, in vehicle mode. But yeah, you compress the wheel. And then this is the scariest part of the transformation. Honestly, is you have to take this section and kind of work it so that the wheel fits through this little uh, groove on the other side. And there's just like not a tremendous amount of clearance for this. There's like kind of a cutout on the hinge that this piece is um, attached to that the wheel is supposed to like slide through. But unless you're like really bending this out of the way, it kind of doesn't line up. So like, thankfully all the plastic feels sturdy enough that it's got like a good amount of flex to it where you can kind of force the section in there but you do have to force it a little bit and then there it's locked in place and then you can see the wheel is kind of peeking out on the inside of the leg there so it's a little scary it's kind of it's more just like honestly difficult to do than like it really feels like you're going to break the plastic but uh yeah it, it that's like the one part of the transformation that, that gave me a bit of hesitation i was like ooh, that does not feel easy. Um, and then you take this panel here and it just kind of folds onto the back of the leg. It doesn't really like tab in super securely or very well, but since it's on the back of the leg and it's like the joints are relatively tight enough, it doesn't end up being too big of an issue in robot mode. Um, and then you take this panel here and just fold it out from underneath and there's this foot. And then you just do the same thing on, other si on the other side, obviously. Untap that, bring that around. Extend the leg, compress the wheel, force this through like that, bring that up and unfold the, uh... <laughs> sorry if you can hear a, a kid outside running in the background. Uh, oh, that came untabbed. Get that back locked in. And then for the arms, uh, you do this like very, very slight extension there. It's like hardly anything. Let me adjust the, uh, the camera here. 
Um, and then <laughs> what's kind of funny, and it makes me laugh every single time, is uh, the way that you have to have the hands folded up in here, and then you pull them out on this hinge. They're <laughs> They're kind of doing like made you look kind of position <laughs> and like for the transformation you actually have to reveal it like that and it makes me laugh every single time I see it because it does actually have to be folded up like this for transformation and you do have to like pull it out like that so it's just it 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 just makes me laugh every time but uh yeah you fold that out like that and then um this panel here, it kind of comes down on this hinge and then also rotates around to the side. And then the whole thing kind of rotates on the smokestacks here to go past the hand, rotate around, and then that panel, which was sticking up before, you tab into the uh, into the arm here and it locks it in place. And then you can, you know, mess with the uh, position of the, the fingers, obviously, which are kind of stiff joints, at least on this side, which can make it kind of annoying. Um, and then and a little extra bit of detail that like you honestly don't have to do, but they included it, uh, is they included an, an, an kind of neat engineering way to compress the wheel a little bit and still make it look like it was like fully out. Um, is the wheel, each of the wheels are actually on a, a, a hinge section. So they fold up like that and then you can compress the, uh, the wheel into the arm. And then it's got a little tab right here that goes into a slot right there. So it, it still visually kind of looks like the, the wheel is like fully, um, you know, revealed and everything like that, but it does compress it into the arm a little bit. Like it seems like such an unnecessary sort of uh, detail, but it's a, you know, that's what you're getting for the, uh, the commander class price there. And what's nice is because, you know, because this piece kind of sits inside that frame, it can't like really compress in, uh, in vehicle mode like the other wheels. So that's nice. And yeah, you do that again, <laughs> feel the hand, uh, and then bring this section around and tab it into the arm. And then there we have Rodimus Prime. Let me just mess with the fingers here in his robot mode and yeah he looks uh he looks pretty good i must say like um you know i i kind of tend to like the hot rod book for robot mode a little bit better than the rodinus prime like when he's got like the, the kind of more matured uh face sculpt there but he does look pretty good i i like him a lot and uh yeah he's uh you know he, he pretty much stands at normal Voyager height. We'll, we'll kind of get into that when I bring on the other, the figures back to uh, show him off with. But yeah, uh, articulation wise, his head is, uh, it's on a ball joint here. And then also has this kind of separate hinge, which I think is mostly for transformation, but you know, you can use it to like make him look up and stuff like that. Um, the shoulders are on joints like this. They can rotate around, obviously not 360 just because of the spoiler. Um, just because like the transformation joint where this like piece rotates around, um, actually, you know what? I take that back. This piece doesn't rotate for transformation. So I think this is actually a dedicated sort of like butterfly joint, which doesn't have a tremendous range, but you know, it, it's enough to give him a little bit extra expression. Uh, his elbows are double jointed so they can fold up like that. Um, the hands here are on the swivel and then also can bend in a little bit like that for transformation. Uh, the fingers, he's got his pointer fingers on two joints here where, you know, it's at a pin right there and then a pin right there. So you can kind of, you know, mess with that. I, I generally prefer just the solid hands rather than having to like mess with the finger joints, but you know, it, it still works relatively well. And then the other three fingers have pretty much the same setup, but they're all all three of them combined together. And then there's nothing at the thumb or anything like that. So, you know, decent hand articulation. I feel like you can get them into a, a fairly good looking, candid open hand pose. Whereas like something like, uh, you know, leader class Earthrise slash Kingdom Prime is he just kind of has like the whole mitt can fold up and down, which doesn't look totally good when open. Whereas I feel like that looks fairly good. Um, he's got a waist swivel here, which doesn't get a full 360 just because of the backpack, but like, you know, human waists don't go a full 360 either. So I feel like that's a, a good enough range there. Uh, the legs, they do that nice thing where like they've got like the sculpted, you know, crotch piece, um, but it's actually like part of the leg articulation rather than being just like stupid flaps that, that fold in front of it. So 
You can move forward and back out to the side. This one does have the flaps, but they're fairly small and they kind of move out automatically. It can only go about that far, but that's okay. Um, it's got a thigh swivel. Oh, he's got a, uh, a bicep swivel, if I didn't mention that. It's pretty much like right at the elbow. Um, knees, he's got double jointed knees. So depending on like which joint you, you, you move first, you can get a pretty good curl. Honestly, just like the one joint pretty much gets the job done. Um, but like, you know, you can do that if you need that for any particular uh, poses or anything like that. And, um, you know, I, I feel like that extra joint there, again, is probably more for the transformation than for like an extra double jointed knee, but it, it can work for specific things. Uh, the feet can kind of tilt forward and back and then tilt out to the side just enough to, you know, give them a good stance on the ground. And uh, yeah, so, you know, fairly good articulation, nothing like super groundbreaking, but he pretty much hits all of the uh, all of the marks pretty satisfactorily. Um, before we bring on everyone else in their in their robot modes, I figured uh, this would be a good time to bring Rekgar back on just so he can address, does he ride Rekgar okay? And uh, the answer is mostly. Uh, <laughs> he does have, you know, wrist joints. Uh, his arms are a little bit short for it, but and his legs are maybe a little bit not wide enough apart, but you can mostly uh, mostly get him on there. And uh, depending on like how you configure the knee joints, um, you, you can kind of get it to sit a little bit more naturally than that. But, you know, I, I think that that works fairly well. He looks a little bit big on there, but, you know, he's a, he's a robot, not like a human. So his legs tend to be a little bit chunkier. So it looks a little weird from the front and stuff like that. But I think that works fairly well. Um, let's bring on some accessories so we can show him off with all of those. This is going to be a Oh, a long video. <laughs> it already is. Um, here he is with his uh, sword, which uh, you can't just slide into his hand. It's good that he's got the, the articulation there because you do have to kind of like feed it in that way and then fold his fingers around it. I think he looks fairly good with that. Um, in terms of storage, the sword itself actually has a, a nice fold out peg that you can uh, fold out from the sword. And it's nice that it has that peg on there. So it's like the, the hinge, so it's not just like always jutting out like a lot of weapons are, which isn't something that usually bothers me, but you know, I do appreciate that. And then that can just peg on right to his back there. Works fairly well. His, uh, his gun, obviously he can hold as well. Looks fairly good. He can hold it in two hands. It, you know, it takes a bit of doing. But, uh, you know, because his arms aren't like super long, but, you know, you can you can get him in a good, uh, you know, two handed gun holding pose. And then for storage, you can fold it in half and it pretty much uses the same pegs that it used in uh, in vehicle mode. And you just plug it in like that. And, you know, it looks OK. It kind of juts out from the side a little bit, which I don't think is like particularly pretty. But, you know, that that's fairly, fairly decent weapon storage. Um, and then we could bring this piece back on and uh, show him off with the, uh, it's, you know, it's obviously made to be for his height. So he, he works pretty well with it where you can get his, uh, his hands on the, uh, the handles here. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I think that looks fairly good. That seems uh, pretty believable, I'd say. And then obviously you can use the, uh, the blast effects and stuff like that on the, uh, the cannons here. It also fits onto his, um, you know, the tip of his gun too. And uh, yeah, you know, I feel like that looks pretty good. Also, if I, if I didn't mention before, the the rest of the blast effects that he comes with are pretty much the exact same set of blast effects that came with, um, they came with Omega Supreme. I think they also came with Skylinks, but this time they're cast in blue. So we've got the, uh, the three tip pieces here, and then each of these pieces are unique. Um, so you've got this one, this one, which look like the same piece, but they're not. Um, this one and this one, so you can do the big, full, uh, humongous, bla humongous, 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 uh, <laughs> blast effect, which was really, you know, more made so for your Mega Supreme. I mean, you can do it with this, but obviously you only have the one, which is kind of sucks because, like, on Hot Rod, like, a lot of the pieces are, you know, made with, like, two ports, and, like, other than the tips, of which there are three, each of these pieces, there's only one of, so you can't, like, make it symmetrical or anything like that. Whatever. Um, these blast effects you can also use on his, uh, I mean, I think you can do this in vehicle mode, too. I think? Yeah. 
I think that these end up being the back of the uh, the ports for vehicle mode. So can these work like that? I guess they can't. So you can't do that in his individual vehicle mode, but you can use them to plug in. Now I'm questioning that. I'm not sure which end of this ends up in the back <laughs> in, in vehicle mode, but they plug into this side, not into that side. Take that information as you will. <laughs> but you can plug it in like that to give him like the fire effect. Again, I prefer if these were blue. I mean, I prefer if they were orange, but considering the rest of the blast effects are cast in the blue plastic, like I wouldn't blame them for doing the blue, but I do think it would look much better in the blue than the black. Weird, weird choice, but you know, that's a, it's, it's fine. It still looks fairly cool. Um, you can bring on the, uh, the trailer again, just to show him off with that in its kind of, you know, uh, base mode. I mean, it, it looks pretty much like it, like you'd expect it to look like you've seen both of them individually. There he is standing in it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> and then we can bring on, uh, all the other figures that, uh, that I showed him off with before. Get him standing there. Here he is with the 86 crew. We'll bring on Siege or uh, Kingdom rather, Ultra Magnus, Siege Springer, let's get Studio Series Blur and Cop, uh, Thrilling 30 RC, Studio Series Rekgar, and Titans Return Wheelie. Just so you can see what the, you know, the main cast of the uh, the crew, or at least all the, the new characters from the 1986 movie look like together. And I feel like that's a pretty good shot. You know, obviously, like, this is a much more of a Rodimus Prime scale with all of them, a Hot Rod scale. And that that's fine. That's what the figure is meant to be. But just something to keep in mind. But yeah, I think he looks fairly good with all of them. He's like, a little bit taller than, uh, than Springer, pretty much the same height as a uh, as Rekgar here at the head, maybe like a smidge taller, but not by much. So, you know, it, it works relatively well, I think. Um, here he is with, uh, <laughs> with Fire Drive from Siege, aka Fire Bolt, who is uh, Hot Rod's uh, G1 Micromaster. So, you know, they look fairly good together. Obviously, he's meant to go with Hot Rod, not, uh, not Rodimus Prime, but same difference. And, uh, you know, you can turn him into his little weapon mode and, and have this guy hold him. And I feel like that looks pretty good. I don't know. Just figured I'd show them off together. And then here he is again with Earthrise slash Kingdom Optimus Prime. So you can see how they stack up. So you can see what I'm saying, whereas, like, he's pretty much Voyager height. I know that Earthrise Prime is a leader, but, you know, he is also pretty much a Voyager height. Here, Rekgar, he's an actual Voyager who is Voyager height. But, uh... <laughs> They're pretty much the exact same height. Um, I think at the eye line, Optimus Prime is maybe like a teensy, 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 tiny bit taller. Um, but pretty much, they're pretty much neck and neck. And you know, I, I feel like that works fairly well. I'm happy that he's about that size. When we saw that he's going to be a commander class, I was worried that he was going to kind of like tower over Prime. Because I feel like Rodimus should really be the same height as Prime or a little bit shorter. So, I, you know, I think that works very well. Like, you know, he could maybe be a little bit shorter for to Prime for my liking, but I, I think it works relatively well. And then the last thing I want to talk about is uh, he does include a little Matrix accessory. If you take his chest here and you untab, uh, untab this piece and then fold the whole thing down, there he's got a little uh, Matrix in his chest. And um, it's kind of tricky to actually get out of there. It's like a lot tighter in there than Optimus Prime's was, but you can see that's what that looks like. And then that's what this blast effect piece is for, is uh, has these two little like pieces here that just kind of like go over the outside of the like inner ball of the matrix. So you can give him the, uh, the glowing matrix, which is kind of cool because it's like, I think that, you know, like though I don't have that figure, uh, the Studio Series one came with a piece like that too. So you can kind of like have him turning into Rodimus Prime. And he can hold that. I'm not going to bother to try to get like his fingers in there or anything like that, but it, it works relatively well. What's kind of interesting is uh, I assumed that it was just the exact same piece as the uh, Earthrise Optimus Prime Matrix. And uh, I mean, obviously you can see the paint differences there, how this one is a bit more of like a lighter gold. And then obviously this one is cast in that blue plastic as well. 
um, as opposed to the light blue plastic that like Prime's windshields are cast in. So like the inner blue is a little bit darker, which is kind of not picking up terribly well, but it's actually a different piece. Um, like it's mostly the same, but like the, the ball itself is a bit bigger. Like you can definitely see it from the back here, how, um, like this piece is a bit more rounded out than the one that came with Optimus. And this one has like a bit more of a hollow section to it. Cause I was, you know, I was like, oh, can you actually use the, uh, the matrix piece with that one? And you kind of can, but it's actually like, it's holding on to a different kind of spot. Like it's not really holding on to the, uh, the ball itself as much as it is just like pressed between the, um, the like handle pieces of the matrix. And if you try to put them in each other's like chests, like it doesn't really work. Like you can see like, this is just a little bit too small for those little pieces to kind of hold on to it. Like it doesn't really fit over them. Like you can kind of get it to stay, but it's not holding in the same way that this one is. And when you plug this one in this side, the, uh, the ball itself like doesn't allow you to plug that in at all. So kind of interesting. I'm not sure if like, you know, which one of these came with Studio Series Hot Rod or which one of these is also coming with Galvatron. I'm pretty sure they're probably gonna stick to the, the new one, but I thought it was kind of neat to find out that they're not actually the exact same piece because I just assumed that that would make sense. But uh, yeah, worth mentioning. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's uh, really not a whole lot else to say about this guy. I mean, he, he looks pretty good in, in both modes, I'd say. You know, the, the integration with, like, some of the, the uh, pieces like that, like, I, I think it's kind of strange how they don't have, like, a specific place for the, the gun to store in the, like, full combined vehicle mode. Um, since they have, like, com you know, a place for pretty much everything else to store, including, like, a number of the blast effects, which, like, no one needed really storage for. Um, so kind of weird, but, you know, it works relatively well. I guess the other thing to mention is... Um, with this peg, they also do want you to be able to like plug it into the top here in uh, on the trailer. And at least on mine, that doesn't really work. Like it can only kind of peg in like halfway and it like is kind of loose like that because if like you look on the inside of this piece here, it's like actually causing a bit of a stress mark on the where that peg is. Like you can kind of see it on the inside there is that the hole has like some flash or something. So it doesn't actually like solidly go all the way through probably fix that with like an exacto knife or something and just like shave away on the edges of that so that this could actually go all the way through but like i don't really have any need for the cannon to plug onto the top there so like who cares um but yeah i don't know worth mentioning overall i'd say he's a fairly good figure um you know like i said before there was some question of like oh this guy is a voyager height figure and they're selling him for not just a leader class price but a commander class price and Personally, I think he fills out that price point fairly well. Like, he's much bigger than, like, you know, comparing him to, like, Earthrise Prime, who is also a, you know, a Voyager sold at a leader price. Like, this guy has a lot more in terms of plastic than this guy does, trailers included. Like, this trailer is, is a lot more extensive and beefy than the one that came with Earthrise Prime. And, you know, I, I think he gets a fair number of, like, like in terms of the engineering and stuff like that, like his transformation is also fairly involved. What's nice is like, it's not too difficult. Like it's a lot of steps, but they're all fairly easy steps, except for like the thing with the legs. But even that is like not too terrible. Like you don't have to wrestle with it for a while. So I feel like it's still a fairly, you know, intuitive transformation for the most part, but it definitely feels like there's a lot more engineering. There's, you know, definitely more plastic. He includes a good amount of accessories, like getting this thing in there, like, I, I think he, you know, even though he's not as big as, like, Jetfire or Skylinks, I think he works well as a commander class. Like, I wouldn't want them to have, like, made this same figure a leader class and then, like, really, really water down the trailer. Like, I, I think it works pretty well. But, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's my opinion. But that's pretty much all there is to say about the guy. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, usually substantially uh, shorter reviews than this one. But, you know, he's a commander class. It's going to take a little while. But, uh, yeah, without further ado, here we have Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Commander Class Rodimus Prime. Great figure. <laughs>